do first is I need to remove the uh, the gear mechanism which is this bit here so I'm just gonna remove that just now I've got an 8mm socket and I'm just gonna undo these just break these bolts loose and take these out and then after that uh, literally the very next step is to split the crankcases so let's get these undone about half a dozen bolts here all breaking loose quite easily okay so this one's still a bit tight can use the ratchet on that for the moment oh, and then there's still one in there there's just one there, just need to break that loose stubborn but got that eventually. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to turn the whole engine upside down. Right, so the next thing is to break these crankcase bolts loose. So I've got a 14 mil socket here and my breaker bar and these are supposed to be 20 newton meters but they seem to be quite a bit more than that. The difficulty is holding the motor still. So I've got the motor with one hand and breaking them loose with the other uh, and I seem to have been able to get a couple loose like that there you go, it's not too bad it would be a lot harder without the breaker bar okay, okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap to the ratchet now I'm going to loosen these off seems to be particularly stubborn so more stubborn than the others so I think it must have been uh, cross threaded or something at some point actually mounted here so these are the bolts that hold the swing arm clamps that's why they're such large bolts these need to be replaced after the uh, motors rebuilt because they're uh, angle tightened a quarter of a turn after they've been torqued which means that they're stretched so they can't be reused as is the case with a number of the bolts on the engine This one's being really stubborn. Kind of flakes the metal on the threads, so I think that's something's not right there. Um, okay, so that's those out anyway. Uh, now we need to also break this one loose, which is the same size. Rusted socket doesn't want to go on, so we can tap that on with the mallet. Alright, I'm going to need to use the breaker bar on that one. Need to do now is find any other bolts that 
need undoing on the top side, so that's going to be these, I think. all the bolts here on the top side so the next step is to turn the engine back over again. Next I've uh, to remove these uh, bearings from the end of the shaft so I'm going to use a 10mm socket for that. I'm just going to break these loose. So now I'm going to undo all the smaller 6 and 7 mil bolts uh, on the lower crank cases. So that's all of these here. There's about half a dozen of these. So I'm just breaking them loose. So what we're going to do now is we're going to remove these bolts that secure the crankshaft. Now these bolts are numbered, so we've got one, two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And we have to, according to the Haynes manual, we have to undo them in reverse order. Okay, so I'm going to start with eight. I'm going to do eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Um, I will need. Ah, it's actually smaller than 14 mil. I thought it'd be a 14 mil socket, but it's not it's something smaller. So let's see. Let's try a 12. So they're 12 mil, so you need a 12 mil socket for these bolts. Okay, so let's uh, put the extension bar on, and we're going to need the breaker bar for these because these will be seriously tight. I can't remember the torque off the top of my head from the Haynes manual, but they are they are pretty tight. So let's see how this goes. Let's get that one there. Hold the motor steady. Oh, actually, that's not too bad at all. I was expecting that to be a lot heavier. Right, so that's eight. Um, seven is there. Okay, so these are breaking loose reasonably easily, which is quite a surprise because I was expecting them to be very tough. Um, Oops, it's moving the engine a bit. Okay, that's six. Alright, so eight, seven, six, and five is over here. Okay, so that's five, four is right next to eight. Three is right next to seven. Okay. And then lastly we've got two and one, which are right in the middle. all of them broken loose. So I'm just 
just going to spin them out now. So again, we'll start with eight. how it's got thread at the bottom it's got something like thread at the top but uh, I don't think that actually is thread but anyway these bolts need to be replaced when we put it back together again so I'll just be getting rid of those so that's number eight out so same with seven well ladies and gentlemen there's a site that we have not seen before during this project the crankcases are now split that's the bottom part of the crankcases there and there we've got the top part of the crankcases complete with all the various components um, the actual splitting of the crankcases um, is not on camera because it involved um, bad language and I don't like having bad language on camera so um, that's why you didn't see that bit, but essentially it involved uh, the use of the rubber mallet and uh, some screwdrivers um, used on some of the pry points. There are actually pry points that you can use to pry the crankcases apart, like there and there, for example. There's a few of them around the engine, um, which mean that you can get a screwdriver in without actually damaging the, the gasket surfaces. These are the gasket surfaces around here around the edges that actually keep the oil in. Obviously you don't want to pry against those because if you do you're going to have an oil leak. Um, but that's basically it. So that's, that's the crankcases apart now. Um, so we can see the gear mechanism for the first time. Um, don't really know what's what in the gear mechanism to be quite honest. Obviously one shaft's the input shaft and, and one's the output shaft. This one here will be the output shaft because that had the sprocket on. And that's the input shaft because that had the clutch on. Um, so, and then the gear selector mechanism is sort of um, underneath somewhere. Gear mechanisms, selector mechanisms in there. Um, we'll have a proper look at that at some stage. Um, here we've got the um, the crank and uh, the con the con bottom of the con rods here. Um, so that's two of the con rods for two pistons and another two con rods there. Um, that's the alternator rotor. Um, you're actually supposed to remove that before you split the crankcases, but I didn't manage to get it off, so we'll remove that at some point, or maybe just leave it on, depending uh, how it goes. Um, so these are the bearings here, uh, crankcase bearings. Um, they all look quite good condition. Everything is kind of smooth and has a film of oil on it, so it all seems quite healthy. Um, so the next step really is going to be to remove the crank, uh, which will involve removing the, um, undoing these nuts and removing the uh, the clamps on the bottom of the con rods and the bearing shells, and then it should be able to lift the crank out after that. And after that, it's just a case of removing the pistons. And we're pretty much there. That's the that'll be the engine pretty much completely disassembled at that stage. Um, we can start then doing checks, um, checking things with the micrometer and so on. Um, so that's basically it. Thanks very much for watching today, and um, please like, share, and subscribe. See you later.